Hi, welcome to After Hours. I'm Ebi Mosani, and your guest to take you to our special guest, Steve Anderson. From uh, he is a national coordinator of the Open Media. Welcome to After Hours, Steve. Hey, thanks for having me. Wonderful. Uh, please tell us about your uh, organization that you work with, uh, Open Media. And uh, after that, I start uh, my question that people, they get to know you, the activities of your organization and they might be interested to get involved with it. Sure. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, so Open Media is a grassroots organization working to safeguard the open and affordable internet. Um, and, and so basically we try and educate and engage Canadians in uh, internet issues and media issues uh, in general because there's, uh, there's threats in terms of uh, the internet becoming more expensive, um, in terms of uh, respecting our privacy, um, and also in terms of us having uh, access to everything that, that the internet and communications have to offer. Can I ask, uh, can I just, I mean, my understanding is uh, there is two uh, way, I mean, do, two things in your organization that you said. One of them is to provide that, and the other one is the threat of expen being expensive and some other stuff. So probably you have projects for e either one. Sure. So yeah. can we go to one first and after to another to find out what are your projects? Sure. So, so I, I think the, the first one I'll talk about is um, in terms of privacy. Um, so, so we have a campaign called Stop Online Spying, um, and, and people can find that on the web uh, at stopspying.ca. And, and basically, the, the situation is that the government wants to pass uh, this lawful access legislation, um, which would enable police to um, get access to the private information of any Canadian at any time without a warrant. And, and so we think that that's bad. We think it's uh, invasive. We think that it's going to cost a lot of money, and we think that it's just poorly thought out and uh, threatens our civil liberties. Um, and so w what we're doing is trying to rally Canadians to contact their, their member of parliament and to sign a, a petition to say that we don't want this legislation. We want to have uh, respect for our, our privacy, and we, and we definitely don't want to be paying for an invasion of our privacy. And so, so far about 80,000 people have signed the, st the Stop Online Spying petition. And uh, the government seems to be, um, th th they wanted to put it in this omnibus crime legislation, but they pulled it out at the last minute. And, and they seem to be dragging their feet a little bit now because Canadians have uh, spoken up so clearly. So we're hopeful that um, the government will back off permanently on this, but we'll have to see. I think people need to continue to be active on it. Uh, when uh, you contacted with the government, just the uh, government or the uh, conservative party or all parties or everyone else, politicians are uh, about this? Yeah, so it's interesting. The, the legislation was initially drafted by the Liberals, um, but now the Conservatives have taken it up. But in terms of right now, the, both, the NDP has come out really strong against this legislation. Um, MP uh, Charlie Angus has uh, wrote a letter to the minister um, asking him to, to pull back on, on it and to respect our privacy. Um, the Liberals have now actually come out against it as well. Um, maybe not as strongly, but they have come out against it. Um, so, so it's really just, and the Green Party too, sorry, has also been really strongly um, uh, against this legislation, against online spying. And uh, it's really just the government is like the only, is the only party, um, and, and really I, I think that they're increasingly isolated in their view that this is a, this is a good idea. You mean the conservative? That's right, yeah. So what was their response? Um, they say that it's just like, uh, they say that the pol police should have access to our um, information without a warrant. They think that that's, that's a good idea and that they need that, which, and so that's where we disagree. And uh, we hope that they'll, they'll, they'll see the light and, uh, and make sure there's proper safeguards. Uh, are you hoping or you are taking action? Oh, no. 
But we're definitely taking action. Like we, we um, we're re regularly in the media about this. Um, we, we host public forums. To, like, we're continuing to educate people um, as much as we possibly can. And uh, we've been putting online educational videos mm -hmm. out. Uh, we've been hosting video screenings of a documentary that was uh, that was produced on this subject. And uh, so we we continue to reach as many people as we possibly can, um, so, so we can stop this. Okay, but uh, beside the uh, uh, action you are taking, uh, the hope you have to have it very uh, uh, understandable. Uh, if it doesn't happen, what's going to happen? If, if they do put the legislation in, yep. yeah. Um, well, that I mean, we'll just have to uh, raise our voices as loud as we can if that happens. Um, but if they do pass it, then that means that um, the, the police on a whim can get access to our personal information without any court oversight. So that's a feature that I hope doesn't become a reality because it's uh, really dangerous. We've seen um, in the UK and in the US, but especially the UK, when they've had this type of legislation, that the police have abused that power. Um, a lot of uh, your viewers might have heard about the Murdoch scandal, um, where there was uh, journalists you know, getting access to people's private information, and and the police were involved in that in some cases. So it's, um, you know, it's a, a scary reality. But hopefully that that doesn't happen. Beside the Europe, the UK you mentioned, uh, is there any other countries they have that kind of access? Can you name and uh, did you uh, research any kind of? Uh, I mean, to the dark side, the really the right. reality, what it's going to happen? Yeah, so yeah. So what is that? Did you? research on that yeah yeah so I, I bring up the UK and in, in, in the US because they're somewhat similar to Canada and they're in their makeup and, and certainly um, yeah, I mentioned some of the things in the UK and then in the US uh, they use this warrantless access to spy on peace groups to spy on uh, you know di different m marginalized groups and and, and, and different uh, different people who make up uh, you know different groups in society um, and so they just kind of collected that information just in case um, and they you know they, they targeted uh, ethnic minorities and, and activist groups yes. and, and then so, so that's so those countries are somewhat similar to ours but really where this uh, technology has been used most is actually Iran, China, uh, you know the, the, those, those those types of countries, and and the the companies that make this really tested it out there, and, and some of them are Canadian companies. Um, you know, they, they, they let China, you know, for example, spy on their citizens. They, they, you know, they let them block websites and censor the internet. And now they're, they're lobbying our government to have that technology in, on the internet in Canada. And so, and so those are the, those are the countries that we're modeling after if, if we put this in place. And, and you know, the, the human rights violations that have happened in those countries are really facilitated by the kind of online spying that the governments are able to do. Uh, the, your research, uh, your research in China, uh, what shows uh, in terms of human rights violation uh, by allowing the government to go that far? And w I mean, what is the end? I mean, what w when you, we look at the far end, what they did? Did you have? Uh, do you do you have the, those research? Uh, in terms of w w what they've done with the information? Yes, yes. I mean, the information, uh, how, what they did. So they got the information and what they did with its citizens. Oh, uh, yeah. In China. The, yeah, in China, I, I mean, the, the human rights violations there, there's just a huge uh, laundry list. But we're talking about um, torturing, uh, in, indefinite uh, detention, uh, in, imprisoning w w without due process. Um, it, you, you know, pretty much anything you can name uh, that, that they've done in China, and, and this technology and this online spying has really facilitated that. And, and so it's a it's a tool that's used for tyranny, um, and and you know, so it's it's frightening that the police and the government actually want to bring that that kind of technology to Canada, and, and we have to wonder about motives. And it's really it's interesting because that w one of the things that, that that we always say is that there's no uh, rationale for why they need this. That there's no like example of of why they need this kind of power to spy on our private lives, and and uh, the 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 chiefs of police association got wind to the fact that we were saying this and that that there was rationale and, and someone leaked an email to us that they sent and and in the email they said 
hey, you know, some pe people are saying that we don't have any reason for this, and we've never been, we've never been able to find a, a good example of why we need it. And so they asked police forces across the country to f find examples of when they would need this. So basically what they're saying is, we don't have any reason for this, so find one for us. So it's a solution in search of a problem. And, and, and so it's really telling that they don't have any examples of why they need this. They just want the power, is, is what seems to be the case. And, and I guess, you know, giving them the benefit of the doubt, it, it'll make their jobs easier. But is it worth, you know, the, the, the danger of giving them that kind of uh, unrestricted power? I have another question. Did you have any research on Iran and who made that happen for Iranian government? Um, I, I, I think it's covered a little bit in a recent report um, put out by the BCCLA, um, but uh, I, I don't have detailed research on, on which companies um, and, and, and uh, put that in place in Iran, but I know that it's the technology is really Yes. It's the same kind of technology we're talking about. It was Nokia did it. Okay. And the people of the Iran, they uh, boycott Nokia. And it was very huge, a Nokia company. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not mistaken, they got to the point of apology for that. Okay. But people lost their trust on Nokia because of this. That they helped Iranian government to uh, track down the activists and the pay was arrest, torture, rape, and killing. So let's go back uh, to uh, this. This is a part of that you wanted to expose that to our audience that the threat of the uh, things that you are fighting for that. Uh, what else in the other avenue that you are taking for the benefit of the uh, citizens. Sure, so, so I mean, the, the other thing that we work on is, is um, ensuring that the internet is open and affordable. Um, and so, so basically there's a, there's a few companies that um, dominate the access to the internet in Canada. And, and you know, they're responsible for, for bringing the internet into our homes and workplaces. And the problem is that there's only a few companies that control that market and they want to make the internet, they want to be able to control it and they want to make it more expensive. And there's a bunch of reasons for that. Um, one is that these companies also control uh, content and they want us to look at their content. They also sell us TV. They also sell us uh, cell phone service. Um, so, so, so they're, they're all over the place and they want us to pay for all of those different things and the internet is a, th is a threat to that. So what they do is try and make that more expensive and they also try to increasingly control the, the market. And so one of the things that we do is, is try to get it so that the market is open and, and not controlled and, and, and so that there's a diversity and decentralized access and, and, and prevent them from raising prices. Uh, yeah, yeah get, they get to the, I mean, some of these companies, they get to the point, they hire uh, lawyers to make protected contract. And I, I was in one of those. And uh, even if you don't get the signal, you have to pay. Yeah. If, you, if you say, I'm not receiving signal, and you sign the contract, oh, we send you a technician to fix it. But they send a technician, and technician said, it's impossible to get the signal to your home. And, but you have to pay for that because you signed the contract. The company does not let you to break the contract. You have to pay for three years. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you call that? This is 